Hi, Mick Garvey from uh, the Air Attack channel on YouTube and uh, Air Gun World, the magazine. Uh, this week I had a lovely delivery from the postman and here we have it. It's the FX Dreamline Compact Tactical. Very compact because it comes without a stock. Uh, obviously this is the folding stock. Uh, it's a modular gun. So um, the thinking behind it is that there's so many options available for a stock, uh, also bottle changes, barrel changes, grip changes. Uh, it comes out the stock, so you can put whichever one you want on it. Uh, I've located one locally to me uh, from South Yorkshire Shooting Supplies, have been Barnsley. The great people up there, Roger and Sheila. I know Roger's not very well at the moment, but uh, I've dealt with them for a long, long time, uh, and they actually had the buffer tube and the uh, the, the Magpole AR15 stock in stock so that'll be going on so i'll just quick run through this as you can see it's got the new supreme barrel it's 22 sub 12 so for all the sub 12 purists this should uh, this should keep you happy gauges on the side regulator gauge tube gauge for the fill the fill now instead of being on the front like on the the early dreamlines and the wildcats is on the side forced a connection for that little cover on it that's sorted two two power adjustments you've got the uh, 0.25 to 0.3 cal setting and the 0.177 to 0.22 setting and then there's a low setting in between obviously a bit of playing around so to tell it's more relevant probably to the FAC than to this but it's still workable so we can all do it obviously then there's a the main power wheel maximum to low uh, a, B, C, D, E, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as normal. Uh, safety on the side. Picketing and rail now, rail now standard. Uh, like I said, the stock is a folding stock. And it's all good without the stock on. But there you go. I don't know if you can see that. That folds. And that'll fold flush to, to, the, to the action. Uh, basically, that's about it. Underslung weaver rail again. Uh, a little bit more usable, I'm assuming, because uh, I'm going to fit a Arca Swiss on this, and it may be I need to fit the uh, the the the, the uh, Picatinny riser just to clear the bottle. I know it was a problem on the impact; it used to interfere with the bottle, uh, and it looks like it might interfere with the tube here. But we'll find that out. We're going to do a bit of a build-up shortly. Uh, like I said, AR15 grip, standard thing. A little bit of a pistol sort of affair. That's the gun, uh, not much more to say about that, we can go through it more when it's uh, when it's built up. I'm going to build it up with a bit of an endurance theme from, from Hawk Optics. Uh, I've got the low mounted uh, precision steel ring mounts, I, I like these, they've got a really solid feel to them, the quick release lever on, on and off, I like those. I've got the Hawk Endurance Scope 30 uh, side focus that's going on I may I may end up swapping out to the compact depending on how that feels on that at a later date but for the time being I'm going to go with the endurance scope and it's going to fit in with all the other endurance stuff I've picked up as well I've got the, the monocular the endurance ED monocular I'll be using that we're going to do a bit of a write and make a bit of a feature of the magazine we've also got the range finder endurance laser range finder that's going to come in very handy if we're down the wood just check some distances some zeros uh, and then we've also got the, the Endurance ED binoculars. Uh, so they are good, you know, they'll be helping me as well. I'll take them and the binoculars as well, and we'll just have a play around them and see how they work out. I've already tried them around the golf course, and I'm very impressed with the glasses, beautifully clear uh, on both the binoculars and the uh, and the monocular. The rangefinder 
is extremely accurate. I've got a really good pace. My pace is generally almost bang on to a meter when I've tried it with others. Uh, and I've tried it again with, with, with this, with the rangefinder, and it was bang on. So I'm happy with my pacing, and I'm also happy with the rangefinder. Other bits and pieces, right, I'll be using air arm dibo field 16 grains. I'm trying to get me a bit more speed out of it uh, and set so But I've got 18s as well. If if the Supreme Barrel prefers an heavier pellet, we'll try that. But I'm hoping that uh, the little bit of extra speed we get from the 16s uh, will uh, will be favourable. Let's say that's those going to be sorted. Uh, right, like I say, I've got the Arca Swiss attachment and I've got a riser, a, a, a weaver riser, which I'm going to have to put on there to set that so I can mount this on my recon tripod whenever I need to. If I don't, you know, generally it's going to be a stalking good, walking around good. But now and again, I might be set up doing some ratting, put a lamp on the top, but you know, on the top, a bit old school, and I'll need to fit it on the uh, <coughs> on the recon tripod. Uh, little pouch, I've got my magazines and my 16 grain pellets in there already. Uh, so right, we've got a choice. We've got two Johnny FL silencers. I've got the Tanto and I've got the Tatsu. The Tatsu is more of a short stubby one. I'm thinking that one. Uh, but let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments. Uh, and that one's a little bit taller and a little bit... Now, the weight difference is minimal. Uh, and I, what I will do, I, there's not anything between, but I will put it on the scales and I'll find out exactly what's what. But I'm thinking... That would look cool, but we'll see. Well, we, 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 we shall see. Uh, so there in there, that's those sorted. Now to the interesting bit, I've got my old Atlas copy bipod. What I've done, because they've, they've all basically fell apart, I've actually locked tightened them all together so there's no cant and no uh, tilt on them. It's just solidly locked up and basically it's just going to be for photographic purposes. But it'll go on there, it'll look the part, so that'll be fine right the stuff i've picked up today from south yorkshire shooting supplies in, in barnsley buffer tube the gun comes out of stock that will screw into there that's that as you can see it's already taking shape i've got a castle lock ring although you don't really need it because it does come with a grub screw you can fasten into that, but myself, I think I'd rather use this than the grub screw. Grub screw's going to dig into it, and uh, I know there's a recess where the grub screw will fit, but I think I'll take the grub screw out and lock it up with a castle nut. That's for me, anyway. Then we've got the CTR, the Magpul. I've gone for a Magpul series because I've actually got a Magpul sling with a quick release, quick detachable push button system on it. I was going to fit that, as you can see. That fits on there. I was going to carry that, and that's how I carry my uh, my impact in the same sort of setup. So, but the new CTR compact compact type restricted stock. This may surprise you. I'm not going for a black. I'm going for the dark earth. Just break it up a little bit. But that has got. If you can see it there, that has got. The attachment for the QD release, which will end up up here, Sicario style. <laughs> but anyway, that's all going to get fitted together. Scopes going on, uh, and then once we set up, we'll uh, we'll carry on with this video shortly. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, like I say, I'm going to I'll say it again further in the next videos. But any comments, any thoughts, anybody who's already got one of these that's done something different to what I'm doing. Please make a comment, let me know. Uh, it's all a learning curve for all of us, it's always says for everything we do. But please let me know. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm swaying towards the the uh, the Tatsu. I think it'll be nice and stubby. Now it's supposed to be all fit in a rucksack. Uh, so I've sent for a rucksack uh, from Jack Pike. Uh, it's the Eagle Pike. I'm hoping all that'll fit in there quite well. And I'm thinking it's probably 500 odd deep by the time it's got the silencer on. So that should that should work out good. Anyway, I'm going to wind this up now. I'm going to start fitting this all together. So I appreciate you watching. 
thumbs up, thumbs down as normal. Any comments, I'll always get back to you. Please comment. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer any questions or take any advice that you may have got that you've already dealt with this. Uh, and uh, I'd also appreciate any subscriptions. But, uh, put a few more on there. The more subscriptions you get, the more other people are interested in supplying stuff for reviews, uh, and we get some giveaways now and again for it. So, which some guys have already benefited from that. So, yeah, please comment, thumbs up, thumbs down, and subscribe. That's about it. We're going to wrap this up, and uh, we shall catch you in uh, in the next vid shortly. Thank you. Bye. Hi, welcome back to uh, Mick Garvey Air Tech Channel on YouTube, and uh, also. Airgun World. Uh, you probably won't realise, but since the first part of this video, uh, I was going to build it a build up and go straight back on again. I was actually keen to get out. Uh, I've not done that for for about a week or so. Uh, so there's been a bit of a week gap between me doing the first part of this introducing to what I was going to do and to what I've actually done, which is in this video. But apologies for that. But it doesn't affect your viewing. Uh, just condenses like cook two weeks down into. Uh, 10 minutes, however, however long you decide to keep on watching. But anyway, uh, the gun. For me, this has now become a hunter's dream. Hunter's dream line. Uh, it's everything that people are saying it is. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a connection with FX. This is really a superb, superb animal. Uh, it's so lightweight, it's carryable, it's, it's, it, in sub-12 it's got the shots on, in, in, in FAC, you get a bigger bottle on, you get the power plenum on, <coughs> uh, you're going to get even more shots than, than what you would do with the standard FAC. So it's, it's, all, it's, all, it's all there, it's working, it's working really well. Uh, a couple of things I've done differently since the, the, the original video, uh, I've gone for the uh, Tanto rather than the, the Tatsu. Uh, I looked at it, thought about it. I had a word with Babs, she says the slim one looks better. I had a word with a good friend of mine, uh, Benjamin, up in the Lake District. Hi Ben. Uh, he said the same thing uh, and he's not behind the door when it comes to things like this. So uh, we decided we'll go for the Tanto. Uh, I also decided to go for the Dark Earth pistol grip. I'm going for the whole grubber eyes one, which feels really grippy. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm I'm going to get onto the Atlas Copy crappy bipod shortly, uh, but that is where I mean that looks superb. Obviously, the folding stock falls flat back to there, locks into place, nice and lock solid. Lever on the back, and the secondary lever here, as you can see, click that, and that just takes up a, just a little bit of movement that might be there. I've also gone and fitted, even though I said I wasn't going to. The castle nut, uh, sorry, the, the grub screw. I fit the castle nut on, and the grub screw I thought I could do without. I'm thinking, belt and braces job, I'll go for castle nuts and the grub screw that comes supplied a standard from FX on the Dreamline. So that's that's doing both. The last thing you want to do is anything coming loose. Talk about coming loose, I might as well talk about it now. The crappy Atlas copy bipod, Chinese knockoff. My fault. I bought three, four of them, and every one of them's acting up. Every one's probably just fit for the bin. I won't want to take a shot. I mean, I've, I've locked tight to this, and it's it's just it's come up. And it's just garbage. So I'm going to be looking at something I could take a proper atlas or, or maybe a, a javelin or, or, or a Spartan or, or, or whatever. Whatever. Uh, anybody out there who wants me to give them a try, give me a shout. You can find me. You know where I am. But that. For the moment, it's for graphic purposes. I would not want to be taking a shot with anything that loose. Uh, a couple more things about it. Obviously, it takes the uh, the side shot magazine. Uh, obviously, the top comes off. You feed the pellets in, sticks it in. The actual receptacle or the receiving end for the, for the magazine is on a slope, so it actually slopes up as you put it in. Uh, a few things about a few things more about the gun. Obviously, decent sort of shots. I'm getting like at least four mags. I've never run it dry or down to the point where the, the gun's empty. My dive bottle is getting quite low, so the next thing I'm look, possibly thinking about is a, is a compressor. Because if we ever have this again, uh, we've got to make sure those dive bottles are filled before we shut down. So I need I, I do a lot of shooting in the air, so I need air. So that's that's the next thing I'm looking at. But anyway, the the, the barrel is the new superior. 
uh, superior liner and that is the new as you can see the shroud the shroud part is much much thinner than uh, on the uh, original Dreamline. The original Dreamline sort of flared out and you could not get a buddy bottle to fit on. That interfered with it. But this is part of the reason for doing it. A lot of inquiries about this. People asking about this because obviously it's a much better looking thing. Relatively quiet with that on. FAC wouldn't be, you know, probably less so. With the shroud on, uh, it's quiet. Put the Tanto on, even quieter. Uh, I actually no complaints at all about this stuff from Donny. Donny's supplied me some really nice stuff and works really well and it looks good. Uh, we all like looking at nice things, so why not have something nice on the end of it? So that, that's good. The, the, the barrel, like I said, 20mm is the diameter of that. And inside that is obviously the liner. That's obviously the end comes off, you unscrew it, that, and that will come away from it. Uh, obviously two screws to take it out. Weave rail on top. And on top of that we've got the Hawk Endurance. Superb, superb uh, scope. Uh, the, the, the quality of the, the glass is amazing. Uh, clear as day, clear as day, as you would expect, I suppose. Only thing is probably a little bit too much for the gun. Uh, it is a bit big. Uh, I put it on there for, for the reason of doing an endurance theme, which we did through the magazine. That'll continue. Uh, obviously, I use the. Uh, so, what was going to find one? Uh, the monocular. The endurance monocular, the ED monocular, and the range finder, which is down there, but I'm not going to start scrawming on the floor trying to find it all great stuff but i'm going to fit i'm going to put the air max compact on that which i think is a bit more fitting with the gun a little bit more shorter a little bit more stubby and fits in better with the old the old idea the old conception of of, of the compact tactical so that's where we're going with that uh, as we said before the the stock just screws in folding like we showed you before uh, under the castle nut, under the rough screw that just screws out, screws in and that's it, that's all you need for that I've adjusted the trigger uh, because I like my trigger to have like a really short first stage completed <clears throat> by a crisp like breaking glass glass cane, if you know what that is uh, for, the, for the second stage so it's like little creep gone no no hanging no I, I, in between just like short first stage click gone just at that 1.5 mil allen keys uh and that's all you need the butt stock uh, sorry the uh, pistol grip five mil allen key and that's all you need allen keys take the barrel out obviously the the, the air tube will unscrew it's got a valve on it which you can unscrew while it's still alive uh, and that's it. So all you really need to do any sort of adjustments, the basic stuff, is a set of Allen keys. Get decent quality ones. Last thing you want to do is like chew the end of the screws up because these are crap. But uh, the, the, these work well. These are not crap. If you do get some crap ones, then they, they're going to be. Don't make a mess of screws. It's worth spending good money on decent tools. Right. Uh, I've been out with it. I've done uh, the next feature for, for Airgun World is. Uh, on a bit of a squirrel hunt, we had a bit of a sexual day, so it's a day. We will not get too much into that. Uh, I'll let you uh, pick that up and have a read of that. But uh, it's becoming quite apparent that this is going to be one of my go to guns. Whether it'll replace the impact, I don't know, but it's touch and go. Touch and go. I never want to be without the impact, but I won't want to be without this now. Uh, so we in the woods, we had a decent day, we had some squirrels and, uh, and some various other bits and pieces, but well, you can read about that. Uh, I keep all my pellets and stuff in this little pouch here and then obviously take the, uh, the the magazines out, carry them in my pocket and that's that taken care of. I don't carry them around in that all the time. Did a bit of targeting, uh, target practice, zeroing, messing about in the back garden, uh, been using the, the custom targets uh, gear which I sent for. A uh, couple of tins, got the 177 tins and the two two pellet tins. I'll keep my pellets for the uh, the 177 impact in that and this for the two two, which I've already got some in and what I tend to do is just have these set up, either fill them mic or take them straight out of there. Uh, keep a track on how many shots I've taken just by looking in there, see how many's missing from it. Uh, at the moment I've probably not even put, I may have put a, a tin of pellets through this up to now, so it's still bedding in. Uh, 
I've done some videos of the uh, custom targets on the on uh, with the little cardboard knockouts on the pellet catcher. That looked quite good. That's turned out quite well. Actually, very impressed. 25 yards. Safety at first. Obviously, very safe conditions through the house on my own, uh, through the lounge, through the kitchen, through the extension, into the back garden, to the pellet catcher. Nothing in the way. Nobody in the out. So, I mean, that is one of them. That's 10 shots, 25 yards, 16 green diablos. Says it all. Another one there, same sort of thing. Can't go wrong with that. I've also did some uh, some readers on the Chrono. Now I'm only using the Crumbo 625, which can be affected by light. Uh, and we did have a struggle with it first until I got the lighting conditions right. But ten over ten shots, we've got a spread of uh, 0.25 over the uh, over the foot pounds and seven FPS over the FPS range. Averaging about 11.35 and averaging 5.64, 5 to 64.8 on the FPS. Uh, as a high for the foot, foot pounds, we had 11.49, and as a low, it was 11.24. Uh, for the feet per second, obviously, these, you can, these will check out, but uh, as a high, it was 5.69, as a low, it's 5.62. I believe that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so the gun's still bedding in, I would say. It's still running in. You can tell by every shot it seems to be a little bit more crisp, a little bit better. And you can tell by the sound, the, the acoustics, what when it's hitting something, how, how, uh, how it's improving. So everything's getting there. Uh, like I say, it's gonna, this is, well, I'm going to class this as a hunter's dream. It's got everything you need. It's lightweight, it's compact, it's got the shots, it's quiet enough, it's... It's a folding stock, it fits in a bag, you can carry it around quite easily. Plenty of shots, like I say. Lovely trigger on it, lovely trigger on it. Uh, more than manageable, lovely free hand. Uh, in the hide, in the car, walking through the woods, it's everything you need. Like I said, the only thing I'm going to change is the scope. Uh, and I'm going to fit out the uh, Air Max Compact. That'll be on that next time you see this. That's about it, we still, like I say, I don't know if I mentioned it, we're still using the 16 grain Diablos. Uh, seems to love that. I'm fortunate that uh, most of my guns, all of my guns as far as I'm aware, uh, if I cast my memory back, they all are loving the, uh, the Air Arms Diablo fields. 16 grains, 5 point, which one's worth it? 5.52, that's right. So, yeah, get yourself a tin of those, give them a try. I mean, everybody favours GSB, a lot of people favour GSBs. Uh, give the Air Arms a try. I found uh, I, I moved from GSP to air arms just simply for the grouping because they group that well. So we're going to wrap this up now. I think we're about as far as we've gone. Uh, we can go. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for thanks for looking. Uh, any thumbs up, thumbs down, greatly appreciated. Uh, any comments? Get your comments on there. I'll reply to anything uh, that you put on there straight away and. Uh, any subscriptions please subscribe if you subscribe we get more people interested we get some freebies thrown our way and I can knock them out to you guys and just for just a free competition for you uh, did I mention the uh, I don't know if I mentioned this this is one I've got me I've been trying to head torch out uh, and this I'm very impressed with uh, I'm just going to show it to you briefly. I'm not going to do too much into it because it's not about this today. But that, I'll be giving that away sometime sometime soon. Uh, same, sorry, regs, uh, rules at uh, competition. So, but that, we'll take care of that later. So, once again, thanks for looking. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for any thumbs up. Thanks for any thumbs down. Any comments, I will get back to you. And please subscribe. It gets us more notice. It gets more people interested. So, thanks a lot. We'll catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.